Fresh divisions appearing in the U.S.-Israel alliance with both sides airing differing views on the creation of an independent Palestinian state following the war. Now, that's after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made clear that the idea of Palestinian sovereignty directly contradicts Israel's security. In an apparent challenge to that, the United States has since reiterated its commitment to a two-state solution, noting that there is no way to solve long-term security challenges without Palestinian statehood. U.S. National Security Advisor John Kirby also underscoring that there should be no reoccupation of Gaza after this war. Still, Washington says its support for Israel remains ironclad. On the ground in Gaza, airstrikes near the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City have killed at least 15, while gunfire has also been reported in Han Yunis. That's the main city in the south where Israel believes many of the Hamas leadership is hiding. Israeli forces say that they have reached the southernmost point of the ground invasion. Living conditions for thousands across the Strip remains dire, meantime. It's been a week since a near total communications blackout. And the WHO reports a growing number of cases of hepatitis A and of jaundice. Fears of a wider regional conflagration, meantime, persist. Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen have claimed another attack on a U.S. ship, this time in the Gulf of Aden. The U.S. military says that the missiles missed their mark and that there were no injuries or damage to the vessel. President Joe Biden says the United States will continue with its own strikes on rebel targets in Yemen while Houthi aggression in the Red Sea continues. For more, Sarah Coates joins us. She's live for us from Tel Aviv. Sarah, the question of Palestinian statehood, it's again in the spotlight. Is Israel at risk here of losing allies over this open opposition to the idea of Palestinian sovereignty once this war ends? Hello there, Dawn. Well, look, it certainly appears as though a rift is developing here. But look, what we need to remember is that Israel and especially the United States, uh, they really have their hands full. We need to focus here on the US. It's not just Gaza that it is concerned about, not just post-war Gaza it is other areas that are really heating up. We are talking here about the Red Sea. You just mentioned these continued attacks by the Yemen-based Houthi rebels. Uh, these ships continue to be hit as they're travelling through this very busy shipping lane. Uh, they've been then conducting these counter-strikes on Houthi assets inside Yemen. Then there is, of course, Israel's northern border with Lebanon. We've had heard Washington call on Hezbollah to pull some of its fighters back off this border to try and calm this region down de-escalate the situation. But every single day, there continue to be tit for tat strikes over that border. Uh, certainly very, very concerning there for the United States. And lastly, we really need to mention the West Bank. The United States has been continuing to tell Israel to put a lid on this area, to keep it cool. But look, what we're really seeing on a daily basis now are these raids on West Bank refugee camps, the latest Tulkarum refugee camp. This raid just wrapped up. It was ongoing for 45 hours. We do know that around eight Palestinians were killed. That's according to Palestinian media and dozens and dozens of people arrested. And just finally, the US is extremely concerned over settler violence. We uh, do know that it has put restrictions on settlers, banned visas for them entering the country uh, for those who have found to have been complicit in violence against Palestinians, Dawn. So certainly very worrying for the United States. Another situation, Sarah, the communications blackout that we're seeing persist in Gaza, entering its seventh day now. How is that impacting the wider humanitarian situation in the enclave? Well, look, the situation is absolutely dire. We've all seen these horrific pictures coming in, people clinging to food trucks, trying to grab whatever they can. The UN aid chief, or the UN chief, rather, I should say, Antonio Guterres, he is calling the situation in the Gaza Strip beyond words. And look, let's talk about this hospital situation because we do need to remember just how many people are wounded, how many people have also been killed. 
Two thirds of the hospitals inside the Gaza Strip are now not working at all. One of the last remaining hospitals that's got any kind of functioning wards is the Nasser Hospital. That is in Khan Yunus. We are hearing now from staff inside that hospital that the situation is catastrophic. This is the hospital where 7,000 odd civilians were sheltering. We now understand that Israeli strikes are coming just metres from this hospital. People are trying to flee, but they simply have nowhere to go. And look, UNICEF is also ringing the alarm bells. 20,000 babies have already been born since the beginning of this war. We are now hearing that malnutrition is basically hitting every child inside the Gaza Strip. That is simply due to the fact that the food is not nutritious enough well, uh, aid groups say that hepatitis A is rapidly spreading in these camps due to overcrowding. So, look, all in all, it is absolutely horrific, Dawn. Sarah, thank you for that update. Sarah Coates there in Tel Aviv.